Welcome back to Making Money Matter, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Kerry Stevenson, and I've asked Mike Hudson, the Managing Director of Southern Cross Gold, to join me today. Why? Because it's another day and it's another press release. No, not really, ladies and gentlemen. It's 2024, and I haven't spoken to Mike since, when was it? November 23. So I thought it was time to update you, our beautiful community, on what's happening with Southern Cross Gold. There is a lot of news out there now. I'm not going to take Mike's uh, thunder away from him because he's going to explain who they are in very simple terms. Because one of the things that I'm finding, and I, I really want to express this to all of you out there, and please make sure you hit the like and the subscribe, share this with other people. Because what we're aiming to do with this, this is a gold story. And if you've been under a rock, maybe you don't realize, but the gold price is starting to move. And I think that this is going to be a fantastic year for gold. Southern Cross Gold, by the name, is a gold story. It's in Victoria. And I really want to simplify it so that you understand that 2024 could be a pivotal year for Southern Cross Gold. So, Mike, great to see you. Welcome back to Making Money Matter. Thank you, Gary. Always a pleasure. I look forward to the the, the next minutes as we uh, as 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 you put me through the gorilla. Uh, and I do, I, I don't want to put you through the griller, but I do want to understand and help our audience understand right now where the value might be lying as we move into uh, 2024. As I said, I last spoke to you at the end of last year. There's a, there's been, as I, as I said at the start, another day, another press release. Um, we'll get into the fact that you're going to be listing on the Canadian Stock Exchange in a little while. But for those of them that don't know, and also, more importantly, I have a lot of people in the community that are not that savvy with mining. Your project is very close to the largest gold mine, I believe, in the world. Highest so, grade. Yeah. Highest grade, I beg your pardon. Highest grade in the world. Explain to us what it is you've got and why you, Mike, are excited about the future for Southern Cross Gold. Yeah, so in, in simple terms, Victoria's supersonic, right? It's produced about 1.5% of the world's gold, built the expansion of Australia and the expansion of the English Empire during the 1800s. And then basically from World War I, it was that the industry left here and and then race forward until, you know, only seven or eight years ago, about 2015-16, and Fosterville, which was a mine and has been a mine since the early 2000s, uh, found some extraordinary parts of that system as they were going deeper. And it became, for four of the last six years, the highest grade gold mine on earth. It uh, it was the lowest cost gold mine and, and it was a top 10 producer. So it wasn't a small little high grade thing. It was significant. So you weren't too far off in in, in that initial description. and And it created... $10 billion of capital growth going from what it was before it became supersonic to where it en ended in, in a number of companies um, taking over that asset and the, the growth that came. And now that all that uh, capital gain <laughs> went across to Canada. So we can talk about that. Um, so it was lost to Australia. So not a lot of people in, in Australia know about that story. So there, were, there was hundreds of millions of dollars of exploration that came back looking for another one of these supersonic deposits. We've got one. We found one. We're, we're, we're the anointed ones, if you like, lucky enough to have come across a discovery that is literally, you know, in the shadow of the head frame of of uh, what Fosterville was. Now, I don't want to talk about too much about Fosterville, but that was very much the uh, what the thesis was to come back and and find what we found, and and what we've got is is something that is very rare. Um, you know, grade is critically important in this business, and and um, why, why, whole... why why is grade critically important? Because it uh, creates a much higher value product essentially. So the average grade of gold mines around the world is one gram per tonne. Now, one gram per tonne is around about 100 bucks in situ value today, Aussie, more or less. Um, and if you've got something that is 10 times that, and now we, we're pre-resource, but we put some expiration target out and we've, we've, uh, we've, 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 we've got some fair idea of where this is heading, we're 10 times that average grade. You're 10 times better than than others. And you can then create 
projects and margins. So it still costs you the same to mine per tonne, but your marginal cost or the marginal difference between what you're selling for and what, you, what your, your underlying cost is, is, is so much bigger. So it creates great high margin operations. And hence that market cap increase of what we saw at Fosterville was because, because of what Fosterville was. It was the you know, highest grade gold mine on earth. The margins were incredible. And it was spitting out you know um, um, a billion and a half bucks a year free cash flow. So, so that that's that's the kind of dream. But we've got more than a dream. We put thirty million dollars in the ground, and if you look at our discovery uh, on a metric of just discovery, so we put drill holes in the ground and we drill lots of gold. If you look at the the amount of gold we're drilling relative to the amount of drilling that we put into it, so on a pro rata basis. There's there's I can't see anything better in the world. The the amount of gold the the that uh, relative to the amount of drilling that we've got, I don't think there's a discovery. And I, I challenge everybody who's in our technical space to to say, ah, oh, no, that's you're, you're wrong. But it 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 is the one of the best, if not the best, discoveries, and it's become that only over the last six months as 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 our deposit, our project has become supersonic, and we're finding these extraordinary grades and and widths that uh, that 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 this thing is delivering. Mike, did you get all? Because I know I talk to a lot of companies out there. Mining it, it can be very tricky. It, it's not like you walk across a piece of ground and go, "There it is, let's drill there." There's a lot of work that goes in, if you like, behind the scenes. With discoveries, Mike Hudson, did you get lucky, or was there a lot of work? Is this something that you had for a while and you kind of knew what's what's the work that you did around this to ensure success? For shareholders going forward, <laughs> there's always luck, Kerry, um, without a doubt. But the you know the cliche is that you create your own luck, and yep. and 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 um, I, with my business partner at the time, owned uh, most of the assets that we have in Southern Cross twenty years ago. And I was trying to tell a Fosterville story twenty years ago, but the timing was wrong. So it's not. Don't tell me what to buy. Tell me when. And I had the the wrong time to try and promote Victoria and a a, a Fosterville Mark II discovery. Uh, twenty years later, the timing was very right for that. So this has been a a, a career long view on Victoria and 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 understanding the 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 technical aspects. And understanding what we needed to do early on uh, to to make this a success, but you know, there's 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 a strategy there that you can claim, and and rightly so, the strategy that we undertook was to you know go under literally these style of deposits that are a bit unique in Victoria and that are relatively new. It wasn't what made Victoria famous a hundred years ago. Geologically, they're they're a little different, and Fosterville was. Only, you know, not even a decade into understanding the commercial opportunities here in Victoria. So we went under the old mines of this style and we went deep very early because we know they get better at deep. So drilling, you know, from surface um, right down to, to a, a kilometre deep. So, so and then, of course, the things developed. It's, it's got ahead of my expectations on where this is headed, right? This is, this system is... Um, no doubt better than I could have ever hoped for. So that's that's the luck, right? You, you just never know the absoluteness of how your strategy is going to work. Uh, Mike, what would you say to those people out there that say, you know, you're over... Because, you know, we're Aussies, so we, we're, we're sceptical of everything, aren't we? Um, different in Canada. They, they go, whoopee, it's all great and it's fabulous. But what do you say to the sceptics out there that say you're promoting too much, it's too good to be true? <laughs> no, it's because it is. It does look too good to be true, without a doubt. That the numbers are world class results that uh, people will have a natural scepticism about. And you now we've taken 170 people up the site, and and uh, we're fully transparent about what we've got. And that's a beautiful thing, being so close to so close to Melbourne. And so so we encourage anyone uh, to to come up and see it, and we'll talk talk through what we do have it's it is very real um what we do have um now the over promotion <laughs> uh we we are in the storytelling business without a doubt uh, um you know it's no good having a good deposit if nobody knows about it so i i think um 
I think uh, that speaks for itself, right, uh, in, in terms of promotion. But uh, in terms of telling a very real story, um, it, it's, uh, you know, we're very technically based and very well trained. And, and uh, you know, every exploration project has certain risks. There's no, there's no doubt about it. We, we're not on mine today. We're an exploration project. But, uh, but everything about this looks, feels, smells, and uh, where it's heading, and just the the tra trajectory is that this is this is going to be a very rare uh, asset in in the gold business, uh, and uh, and uh, you know it, uh, it the drill string doesn't lie. You mentioned that you've put thirty million. That's a lot of money. Thirty million into the ground, going as deep as a kilometer, which is very deep. But I guess you've learnt lessons from Fosterville, which. I remember back in the day, in the early days of Fosterville, they were going very shallow and they weren't finding those very rich lows. Then when they went deep, all of a sudden it's off, it's off the charts. Um, are you following, I guess, the journey and have you learned some lessons from Fosterville? Is there some similarities with what you've got your hands on? Yeah, so absolutely. We're standing on the shoulders of giants and, um, and I use that term a lot, but we are without the knowledge that they've uh, learned and and shared with the industry, um, you know, it would have been a hard ask. It took Fosterville two million meters essentially to find that 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 Cinderella zone, which you call the Swan zone, the very high grade zone. We we've done it, you know, with uh, with uh, twenty. Well, we're at the forty kilom forty kilometers or forty thousand meters now of drilling, but you know, we've been onto this thing. For the um, for twenty kilometers or something, it took us to to find it. So if you think about the absolute cost and discovery cost to get to where we are, it's incredible, right? We we put thirty kilometers of the forty in the last year. So this is this has been a race, and uh, and we've done it at a discovery cost that you know is is um, you know very <laughs> very cheap actually, and and that's the beauty of how we can drill this system out. It all comes back to the cost of capital and creating a company with a higher share price is not to not to need to drill, um, you know, uh, like hundreds of thousands of kilometres before you find something, number one. Yep. We're on to it early days so we can manage that capital. And then the style of this system is that it hangs together quite well and the way we drill it means that we don't have to, to put... Um, you know, hundreds and hundreds of kilometres into the ground to build up those resources. We can do it with a relatively low amount. So that basically means we we can we don't have to raise you know the capital that's maybe some other deposits do to to build this into eventually what needs to be a and will be a, a very significant rare high grade and large resource. You just said it hangs together well. Again, um, I'm, I'm trying to get them to. To dumb it down for all of us, ladies and gentlemen out there. So when you say it hangs together well, what do you mean by that? Well, you put one drill hole here. Yep. You put one drill hole here, and we've got confidence that you can you can draw a line between the two. Um, and and that that that's a, a scalability thing. Yep. So it can be from you know our drill holes are literally something like that in terms of diameter, uh, and and you can cut the drill hole in half and. The assay of gold in this is replicable here. Um, it, you can think of it like a plum pudding, I suppose, the, yep. the, the project. So uh, in Victoria, traditionally, uh, the deposits like Ballarat and Bendigo were amazing deposits, but they were like the sultanas in the plum pudding. And if you put a drill hole here, you might hit a sultana, you put a drill hole here, you'd miss it and you don't know you're close to another one. So it's very hard to draw lines of continuity between grade. These these deposits that we have, Sunday Creek and, and Fosterville, and, and, and that style are more like the flower in the plum pudding. So you can put oh, a hole, hole here and a here, and, and then uh, you can be confident. And there's there's lots of reasons. Technically, you know, there's 50 years of mining on this project that informed us around that. And, uh, you know, like, let me get technical, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell it simply. There's a, there's a, there's a measure of, uh, uh, any data set, whether it's cars on the road or population or gold in a in in rock, it's called the coefficient of variation, and that's the the mean divided by the standard deviation, and 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 that basically shows the regularity. If you sample here and here, that the the points have some consistency to each other. 
in 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 a resource sense when we put together resources we want to see low coefficients of variation and that shows that points are relative to each other so if you're below one it's like water basically or coal you can know point here point here it's continuous if you're above five it's it's erratic and and you want to be a, a below two um is is the sweet spot that resource geologists like, like to be in and when we have enough drilling in parts of our project we're at one and a half so that's that that's the magic number one and a half is good <laughs> That was nicely said because that makes a lot of sense. Uh, now, that when I spoke to you, and I think it's important, and by the way, not financial advice, ladies and gentlemen, do your own research, call up Mike, look at the research. And as Rick Rawl always says, if you're going to invest, make sure you read the quarterlies, understand the company before you put a dime of your hard-earned dollars into it. So do your research. However, when I spoke to Mike, uh, I think it was in October of last year, their share price was around 90, 95 cents. Uh, today, I'm looking at your share price at $1.70. Some people might say it's fully valued, uh, but I think you're only just getting started. It's important to note, though, that is it 50% of the company is owned by a Canadian listed company called Mawson Gold? Is that correct? 51, yes. 51, 51. Talk to us about the rationale behind that and um, what that means for the company, because I note that today, you have announced that you're going to be doing a dual listing on the Canadian Stock Exchange, the TSX. So I'd love to understand, I, I want you out there to understand that 51% of the company, the shares are in Mawson Gold, which is a TSX listed company. What's this dual listing all about? L let us as a community understand the rationale, the strategy and how that's come about. Yeah, sure. So absolutely, we're we're at the start of this journey, not the end. So uh, we've got a pathway to continue to build this, and we'll talk about that and perhaps address that later. But that was the first part of your your yep. uh, in, in entry into the question. But now the dual listing is is all about basically opening up the pool of investors to a broader international uh, group. Already today, Southern Cross with that fifty one percent from. Mawson, which is a TSX listed company, plus about 20% of other investors. We're about 70% um, offshore today. Oh, wow. So so that's a little unusual because Mawson held the assets. I co-founded Mawson. I chair Mawson today. I've got these two hats. Um, and we spun the assets out of a TSX company onto the ASX. Ah. Wanting to give Australian, the Australian market, the benefit of, of well, to, to see ideally the benefit of a discovery like Fosterville. That we have done, no doubt. But we think that combining the Australian listing with the Canadian listing will bring a pool of capital that is larger, ultimately will bring more buying. It will also simplify um, our, our register because we have that 51% that is predominantly North American they, they will be much more comfortable with the stock trading in their own time uh, and, and, and in their own market than trying to deal with what am I doing with this Australian bit of paper, right? Because right. the time barrier is huge. Now, I bet many of your listeners just do not invest on the Toronto Stock Exchange because it's just too far away and the times are... So same again. So it absolutely is going to make an easier exercise there, but it's not around administration that we're only doing this. It's it's around bot bringing more buying. What's that? Uh, that that is because we've got some of the biggest Canadian and North American shareholders. We've got a guy called Pierre Lassonde, who many of your oh, yeah. listeners will know, who doesn't register across <laughs> here, but is probably one of the two biggest names in gold <laughs> globally, and and certainly is very well known in Canada. There's shareholders who've had recent successes in the Canadian market, creating unicorns, billion dollar companies, and 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 that capital is looking uh, necessarily for you know their next deal. Um, so so uh, there's that reason, uh, and remembering, and as we started this conversation, all that capital growth that came from the success of Fosterville came because they were Canadian companies. So yeah. the Canadians really get the opportunity here. So so. Uh, 
there's a huge demand. It's one of the most pent up pieces of news, actually. I've already received messages um, over the last hour um, about the dual listing. Now, we've got to make both listings work mm -hmm. and, and we're not going to forget Australia. Um, absolutely, it's a huge part. And, and if you look at um, the way the Australian market is, you know, it's a, it's a great market. But if you look at some of the better successes in the Australian market, like Bellevue, like De Grey, they had similar -ish registers. They were more than 50% owned by offshore entities early on at sort of a similar scale of what our uh, company is today. So sort of pre pre feasibility. And even today, Bellevue, which is, you know, the highest grade discovery in Australia um, and a great one is still approximately 50% offshore owned. Wow. So, so it's not unusual to see the, the North American and Europeans coming here at an earlier stage. It's just a bigger pool of capital prepared to take risks at the earlier stage. The Australian market likes to projects that are a little bit more de-risk. I'm talking institutional here. Yeah. So, so making the Australian market work, we're sitting here where we know the, the market here very well, but having that additional pool of capital and interest from over there will just create more appetite for our shares. And, and that's ultimately what our job is to do, right, is to, to, to create more buying than selling. And, and, and that's, that's based on a very fundamental asset that we have here, a very rare asset, you know, and one of the best discoveries in the space. Um, but, but so you've got, you've got, you've got the asset to underpin all that, but without, without people knowing that whole marketing piece and with, the sophistication of that market that knows Victoria very well. We think it will just augment our Australian listing very well. Why are Australians so sceptical? We don't have a lot of time left, Mike, but I want to know, why are Australians so sceptical about um, Victorian and Victorian gold? Because, as you say, Fosterville was a massive success for the Canadians. Wake <laughs> up, Australia. Yeah, that's... Um... I call the Canadian market, and I've had 25 years there. So it's um, you know I've listed you know at, at, uh, eight companies um, across there. So that's another good reason. I'm not just some bright-eyed Aussie looking chasing global capital. It's a, a market that I know very well. Um, it it uh, it's really interesting, right? We can go to the philosophy, but but World War One, uh, all the men left to go to war. The gold price tanked. And the Victorian industry basically wrapped up then, despite it being you know sixty or seventy years of building Australia's back on like sheep and gold, right? And 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 uh, and it went across to Western Australia. And Western Australia was a hell of a lot easier. It was less populated. It was the Wild West. Even right. today, I you know I was in Perth a week or two ago, and it's a whole lot of high vis young people with tats, and you just feel like people are doing things right it's can do nature and that yeah. that culture over there looks back at victoria and 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 the latte sipping sort of ness of of how we're perhaps viewed across in this part of australia and so <laughs> it misses the opportunity just by um you know i i grew up next to this project um literally i went to a little school for seven years overlooking sunday creek and 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 uh i'm sixth generation from the town next door i i dismissed my backyard too right because i had a wanderlust to travel and find things around the world but we all dismiss our backyard to a degree the canadians were naively optimistic about victoria they said oh it's got a lot of gold and and they persisted and and, and until they made the success, but that's that's my theory that Victoria just looked a bit too hard, and 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 it has been um, no doubt compared to Western Australia over the years, you know, post since post World War One, but but uh, you know the 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 opportunity here for the, the for the Fosterville is less than ten years old, so it's relatively new, right? So we're still all learning. Sunday Creek, our discovery. Is is putting Victoria back on the map, um, like Fosterville did seven or eight years ago, right? So, and there's many more of these things I've got no doubt um, to find out there. So, um, you know, it's uh, you, <laughs> you you can't beat uh, the quality of discoveries that have been made in Victoria. They are globally leading. There you go, the king of. We're going to start calling him the king of Victoria. Um, <laughs> with all that gold, um, it's it's going to be an interesting time, Mike. We're running out of time. Could you just um, wrap it up in a bow, if you like, and <clears throat> explain to, to people out there, I guess, three reasons why you think right now is an exciting time to sit up and take notice of Southern Cross Gold? 
Now, so so this is going to get a lot bigger should the exploration success continue, and it's and 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 it's continued with gusto over the last uh, last six months, right? So the trend is generally a friend. So this is we're only literally in 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 uh, a third of the one kilometer area we've explored, yeah. and that yeah. that one kilometer is only ten percent of the the broader trend. So and now we're starting to find these very high grades. So this is a high quality rare asset that we're we're creating. So that's number one, I suppose, just the the high quality rare asset that you won't find uh, in in many places, if anywhere, uh, anywhere uh, around the world at the moment. Number two, I, I think this is a different one that uh, we haven't spoken about, but it's the quality of shareholders, right? And we've sort of we spend a lot of time uh, cleaning up the register, if you like. So people who wanted to sell early and flip it, you know, they've come and, and they've gone and the institutional support and the high net worth support of very sophisticated people who are now uh, behind this company to see it through, right? They see this as, um, you know, the unicorn uh, asset and I can't I can't really talk to valuations uh, uh, that much here because that's not my job um, to to talk to the general public around. But that's their support is to build this all the way through. And and you're only as good in one of these companies as your next shareholder, right? Because if your next shareholder is holding, then you know, and 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 there's more buying, and these people are buying too, um, then then your share price is going up. So you don't want in this this industry to have a market cap that goes up 40 times, but a share price that only goes up three or four times. And that can happen if you don't get the capital structure right. So that that's that's number two, the capital structure. And 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 number number three, come and visit us and 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 see for yourself. We've taken a lot of people up by bus and and uh, I, I think that's also a huge part of it that people can see, smell and touch this asset. That um, that makes it very tangible and real. They understand the process of exploration and and also what we have here and and the quality of people that we've got around us. We've got now people who've led the thinking out of Fosterville and and um, and some of the, the 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 key people in the industry because this is this is a fun asset to work on. So come come and touch, feel, smell, and meet the people behind this asset as well. Mike, um, I think what we might have to do because there's so much to get through. There's never enough time. Uh, maybe we should do the next one on site. Maybe we should do an interview on site and actually, because there are some people that will never be able to get to site. Um, that possibly is something we can do. We can, we can bring it through the lens uh, to them from, from site, but it is not that far away from Melbourne. It's pretty easy to get to. And what I do love about Southern Cross Gold, the team, very welcoming, very open, and very open for you, having a look at what they're doing, where they're drilling, what's happening on the ground. So, Mike, it's been great to have you back in 2024. There's, I know there's a lot of news to come, so we look forward to having you back again on Making Money Matter. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks, Gary.